Yo, it's your boy Logos, and tell me we react to another Tom Sal video. This time where he talks about how you're being manipulated. I wonder if he means politically, economically, or socially. But regardless, I'm confident that he's going to drop some knowledge on us, and I'm always eager to learn. So let's get into it. There is an old Russian fable with different versions in other countries about two poor peasants, Ivan and Boris. The only difference between them was that Boris had a goat and Ivan didn't. One day, Ivan came upon a strange-looking lamp, and, when he rubbed it, a genie appeared. She told him that she could grant him just one wish, but it could be anything in the world. Ivan said, I want Boris's goat to die. Damn. Variations on this story. Instead of just wishing for your own goat, you want to kill your brother's goat so neither one of you has anything to, you know, grow, prosper with, maybe have a nice thing to pass down to your next generation. Of course, not the goat itself, but if you nurse the goat or maybe why well, he could have wished for a male goat or the opposite gender goat and they could have produced more goats together. Like that would have been the best thing. Then you could have passed that down. That's crazy in other countries suggest that this tells us something about human beings, not just Russians. It may tell us something painful about many Americans today, when so many people are preoccupied with the pay of corporate CEOs. It is not that the corporate CEO's pay affects them so much. If every oil company executive in America agreed to work for nothing, that would not be enough to lower the price of a gallon of gasoline by a dime. If every General Motors executive agreed to work for nothing, that would not lower the price of a Cadillac or a Chevrolet by 1%. Too many people are like Ivan, who wanted Boris's goat to die. It is not even that the average corporate CEO makes as much money as any number of professional athletes and entertainers. The average pay of a CEO of a corporation big enough to be included in the Standard & Poor's Index is less than one-third of what Alex Rodriguez makes, about one-tenth of what Tiger Woods makes, and less than one-thirtieth of what Oprah Winfrey makes. But when has anyone ever accused athletes or entertainers of greed? It is not the general public that singles out corporate CEOs for so much attention. Politicians and the media have focused on business leaders, and the public has been led along like sheep. The logic is simple demonize those whose place or power you plan to usurp. Politicians who want the power to micromanage business and the economy know that demonizing those who currently run businesses is the opening salvo in the battle to take over their roles. There is no way that politicians can take over the roles of Alex Rodriguez, Tiger Woods, or Oprah Winfrey, so they can make any amount of money they want, and it doesn't matter politically. Those who want more power have known for centuries that giving the people somebody to hate and fear is the key. That's true. You, that's where you get demagogues from. I mean, that goes back hundreds, thousands of years. It's not just a modern thing where you have people who see people who are downtrodden or depossessed or anything at all, poor, impoverished, and they see those people who live in those conditions and they use those people plight as political power to get their way in government. And sometimes they make it seem like they actually care about the people, but oftentimes they really don't. They just care about being in power and being amongst the same elites they claim to despise to get to where they are today. I mean, look at how Stalin treated people after he got the power. Part of the reason why that communism or Marxism exploded so much is because the struggle between classes and there was a indeed a real struggle between the life of somebody in the upper class compared to the lower class and the peasantry. But even when those people who wasn't aristocracy, they got into power, they, just, they still didn't care about killing people, poor, rich, whatever. If they was in a way of power, they was going to trample them. And that's what I'm afraid of. That's why I'm not trusting of anybody that says, let's go to Marxism or go to communism. Or say that capitalism in of itself is perfect either. Every form of government ran by people need oversight by other people. So corruption doesn't go untreated amongst it. But that's just me. 
In 18th century France, promoting hatred of the aristocracy was the key to Robespierre's acquiring more dictatorial power than the aristocracy had ever had, and mm -hmm. using that power to create a bigger bloodbath than anything under the old regime. Mm -hmm. Shoot, honestly, it goes back to ancient Rome, the Gracchi brother, brothers. There was a few, I think, um, juice, juices or something like that. There was like four or five consecutive demagogues that tried to use the power of the people to usurp the Senate, and that led to a civil war or butchery within Rome itself. And it just plagued itself over and over and over again. So it's not a new thing. But the important thing is to not allow society to get so bad that demagogues can run amok and actually have sway and power. I think that's the best way to fight them, not to kill them or jail them for their speech, but to make society in such a way that they don't have to do that stuff or people don't listen to begin with because they know it's nonsense. In the 20th century, it was both the czars and the capitalists in Russia who were made the targets of public hatred by the communists on their road to power. Oh, that yeah. power created more havoc in the lives of more people than czars and capitalists ever had combined. Like I said. As in other countries and other times, today it is not just a question of which elites win out in a tug-of-war in America. It is the people at large who have the most at stake. We have just seen one of the biggest free home demonstrations of what happens in an economy when politicians tell businesses what decisions to make. For years, using the powers of the Community Reinvestment Act and other regulatory powers, along with threats of legal action if the loan approval rates varied from the population profile, politicians have pressured banks and other lending institutions into lending to people they would not lend to otherwise. Yet, when all this blows up in our faces and the economy turns down, what is the answer? To have more economic decisions made by politicians, because they choose to say that deregulation is the cause of our problems. Regardless of how much suffocating regulation may have been responsible for an economic debacle, politicians have learned that they can get away with it if they call it deregulation. No matter what happens, for politicians it is heads I win and tails you lose. If we keep listening to the politicians and their media allies, we are all going to keep losing, big time. Keeping our attention focused on CEO pay, Boris's goat, is all part of this game. We are all goats if we fall for it. I agree. And it's crazy. I don't know when the book that this is from was written, but I feel like even in 2023, this is still true today. We need to do stuff about our political system. I think part of stuff that we need to fix is the fact that people can just stay in office for unlimited terms. I think people need to be more aware of the politics and the political stuff that goes on in communities and goes on in the country. Because when something happens and it's messed up towards us, the average American person, you're going to be wondering why it is what it is. But if we can figure it out, the causes of it, or whatever bill or legislation is about to get passed in the Senate, House of Representatives, Supreme Court, or whatever, we can at least say something before it even goes. Because I, before I said, I think I said in the previous video, it's easier to stop a law from being enacted than try to repeal it and reverse the effects of it happening. Look at welfare. Look at the poverty within the black community. There's so many stuff that we could have fixed or not done to begin with. But now we have to try to figure out why it's happening. And then you, you got to have little debates back and forth about the actual causes of it. Because, like I said in the previous video, politicians don't want to accept responsibility for their mess ups. They rather point the finger at a million other places. They accept that their policy or idea didn't work out because it might cost them their career and their future. But that's my opinion. It's your boy Logos, and I'll talk to y'all next time.